Hi, Aries. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hi, Aries. Happy birthday. Welcome back to my channel. This is your first time being here. Thank you for being here. I am getting ready to do the spring equinox readings for you guys. Um, we will be back here on YouTube more. We will start off with the equinox readings and then we'll go into the Aries season. Okay, so first to start, um, if you are in need of any services, any readings, any hypnotherapy, any um, type of hoodoo root work or conjure work, check out our website at the link below. Okay, um, right now you can sign up with our Patreon and over on Patreon. It's basically a subscription service for all of our uh, services that we have to offer. You uh, get the option to receive readings, hypnotherapy, or um, conjure work once a month personally based off of uh, the collective readings here. You can choose one of these or you can choose an anything reading from the readings because you can ask anything there, okay? Um, and with hypnotherapy, you get a hypnotherapy session. We go through a workbook process with you working with your beliefs your limiting beliefs, the belief it is that you're working through in regards to your hypnotherapy session. And with conjure work, you get the opportunity to be part of a group conjure. Um, and you also get a discount. All tiers get a discount. Okay, so with everything that is on the site, everything that is available. All right, you guys, so let's go ahead and get started. We're about to get into the spring energy. We have broken it up into two parts, two halves. This is the first half, which this card speaks about nourishment, and the second half speaks about growth. So this would be Aries and Taurus energy, and this would be um, Gemini and Cancer energy, okay? Well, more so the end of Taurus in Gemini. <laughs> okay, so in all of Gemini, I should say the end of Taurus in all of Gemini. So let's go ahead and get into it. First, we're going to go ahead and roll these dice to see what the overall energy is for you in regards to the spring Aries. Let's see what messages your spirit guides, your ancestors. The divine has for you for this spring energy. You all like to know for the spring is when I'm for the spring fall of the time of year. The first quarter of the year. I just asked the last the year. What would you like for them to know? Okay, Aries. So it is all about you this spring. You have the you have Venus and Aries in the sixth house. So with Venus and Aries, first of all, that's all about success. That's about achievement. Um, and you doing this through your daily living. Like the sixth house is pretty much the house of everything for me, right? Because it's it's the place, the basis in which it is that you live your life. It's ruled by Virgo, you know, it's ruled by Mercury. Uh, it has a lot to do with our thought. It has a lot to do with um, our health, our, our how, where we work, who we work with, okay? This is also a lot to do with our habits, um, what we're critical of, how we are critical, criticizing ourselves. So it's very important that for spring, you, where you find yourself to get in the habit of criticizing who it is that you are, criticizing your value, criticizing your sense of self-worth um, within life in general, to take care of that in whatever in way, whatever ways that serve you best, right? Because this is about self-care of the self, literally. Okay. And you honoring yourself, you honoring your desires, you honoring what it is, even your needs. What do you need? Because the sixth house is a lot about needs. What do you need to live your life? What do you need to be able to wake up in the morning? to um, move through the day in a way that is going to be prosperous to you, that is going to be uh, reciprocating your energy, right? Our 
what you are involving yourself in, it's important that you are sure that it's reciprocal of your energy, of your time. So if you have a job, um, it's important for you to make sure that in this job, you are being acknowledged for your worth, for your worthiness, for what you bring forward, okay? This is about your business, making sure that your um, that your time, that your that the cost of your uh, products, your your services, however, that it is in alignment with what you need to live your life, but also in meeting where it is that you deem as worthy. You know, is it worth it? What's worth it? What's worth you? And it's very important that you are. Um, in alignment with that this this uh this spring okay so this also has a lot to do with initiating something new there may be some new love coming into your life um there may be some new partnerships and new work relationships this is more of doing things on your own in a sense but in that you may meet some new people people may be seeing you seeing your worth even you know, that may be coming a lot to you in regards to um, your daily life, your health. If there has been something in that is getting better, it's initiating. Something new is initiating, right? If it's something on the uh, the lesser end, then it's, uh, you know, that invitation for you to initiate the healing it is that's needing to take place within your body, right? Within your mind, even, right? Because if there is some type of health thing going on it could be of your mind right you probably also in this space of making your own money in your own way by your own means as well okay and if not if you are do have a job you're probably working at a position where you are working in solitude and it's probably something that you've been wanting for some time right it's something that you have um been desiring to do in a sense uh because that's how you prefer to work by yourself, you know, and really just being able to lead in your life in the way in which it is that you want, you know, finding, living within the confines of the beauty that you want, right, with the possessions that you desire every day, every day feels good, every day it has movement, it's important that you really make sure that you're um, exercising, that you're providing movement to yourself, maybe want to get into some, dis some dancing, some creative and artistic work even will also maybe building up some hobbies in regards to creating um and not just to creation but artistry as well if that's something that you're into because creativity and artistry are two different things so however it is that it manifests for you um or looks for you that you know those that that's what it is for you you know so yeah, what we're going to do is break these um, halves of the hole down, all right, and see what is going on here. First, we are going to pull some cards from both sides. Let's hear the spirit. What is here for Aries for the spring energy? Aries. Okay. Let's see what's going on. Tower. Okay. So in the first half of the spring, it seems that there is going to be some significant changes happening, taking place, or maybe there may just be an awakening taking place in regards to um, how it is that, what it is that you've been feeding and giving and um, nurturing and loving in your life, right? There may be some changes within um, how you see yourself. There may be some changes in the ways in which that you have been uh, going about walking through life, literally. Like if you have been weak, you are not strong kind of thing. Weakness is, is, is being thrown out because the big house, oh, let me tell y'all the cards. I'm just talking. 
So under the first half, we have the strength card and the big house. So with these two coming out together, this is one, finding the strength in the changes that are taking place. But this is also speaking about strength coming out into play in regards um, to the rebuilding of what has been weak, the foundation that has been crumbling, right? And finding strength within that, right? You there's some rebuilding that has happened here or is about to happen here. And you are either, either needing to find the strength or it is your strength that is rebuilding this aspect of things, okay? And within the second quarter, you have the, the three of coins and the mother of knives. So you know what you want. You know what you're doing. You know where you're going. You have the plan. You have the people to help you if you need help. You may not need help. You might just be doing this on your own with the mother of knives. She's solid. She's a solitary type of energy. You know, um, she's air. And the three of coins, this is Mars and Capricorn. So this is you really getting the job done. Like, you know what you want. You know what you're doing. And you have, and it is manifesting. The work is being put in. And you are receiving. You're receiving. Because the mother of knives, she... She's feminine energy, right? So it's like you do the work and then you go home and you go have fun. You you leave work at work and that's it. But in an enjoyable way, not like, a, oh, I'm done with that. But like, oh, I had a great day. Now I'm glad I can go get off and go do whatever it is I'm going to do, right? So there is a lot of big energy here with you in spring already. You know, you... Um, this first half there, you know, there may be some movement happening and then you settling down and getting very grounded, um, come towards some Gemini season, all right, and getting very clear, making whatever plans it is that needs to be made or just executing things. You may be delegating as well. Um, there may be some people you may need to, you may find yourself hiring people if you need that. Um, or you may find yourself either also connecting with some woman who is giving you information that's helping you move forward through your life in a successful way, right? Um, she, she's, she is a great, she's a great spirit. She's lighthearted, um, you know, but she's somebody you don't want to fuck with. It, you don't want to fuck around and fuck over, I should say. That's Mother of Knives energy, you know, because she she can be cutthroat. And, um, but she knows what she wants and she knows what she's doing. She has the understanding, the awareness. She, she's just, she just knows, you know, if there is no question. She's very sure of it, right? So during the second half of spring, you may find yourself, um, desiring to you may be getting into divination if you don't already do that or perhaps you're connecting with someone who does divination to help support you through that maybe you maybe open it up to allowing conjure into your life all right and allowing that to support you and help you get grounded to help you find the success it is that you need to help you do the healing it is that you need all right now um, but the first part of spring starts off very powerful and very quick. All right. <laughs> you go from, you got fire in air, or we can look at this fire too, double fire. Either way, um, things are being clear. Things are being purified for you. So you can come into the space of, of surety of in yourself of what it is that you're doing. So it's like, you're already very aware of the fact that what was going on wasn't working and it's time to do this another way, right? Because you go into the second half, like, I'm doing this. You're doing it, okay? So let's get an oracle card. Uh -oh. That was a little too close. Let's get an oracle card pulled out here for you, Aries. See what's going on. Now, you may also be needing the strength of whatever it is that does, right? Because we're not all in this space where we are so aware of what's going on. Um, sometimes we just don't see it coming, you know, and it may not be anything big. Most of the time when the big house, the tower card comes out, um, 
it's never it, exactly what we thought it was. You know, we the tower comes out and you're thinking, oh no, it's gonna be so terrible. <laughs> but for one, it's not gonna be because you have the strength card here. And with the strength coming before the big house, it's like you've already been building the strength up. You've been cultivating this. You knew that you were going to need to be here so that this can happen because this had to happen because you knew you was doing this, right? Aries, you might even be teaching, okay? Because the mother of nine, she's a bibliomancer. And she up here giving people the good word and telling them they oracles by way of Bible verses, okay? And then we have a gypsy here. Okay, so you already knew there was foresight in this happening, right? And now you are able to live out what it is that you already knew was going to happen, how it was going to happen, what it was that you were going to be doing, how you was going to be doing it. Okay, so let's see. What other messages? Spirit, ancestors, for the Aries watching this. Messages do you have for them at this time? Rose colored glasses are coming off. And now you're about to be living in a field of roses. That's amazing. <laughs> Let's see what else is happening here. Here. So it is a lot of focus needing to be had on. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah, it's a lot of focus needing to be had here. This says talk happiness and happiness will gra gravitate towards you, right? So with um, the mermail coming out with the uh, strength card and the big house, this one is about, I think it's about versatility. I'm going to read it for you to see what this says. But it says to talk happiness and happiness will gravitate towards you. Right. So the strength card is a lot about happiness. It's also about staying strong, staying strong through adversity. OK, so with this tower card coming up there, somebody may be having to deal with some type of legal something. You may be needing to stay strong within that as this process is right and making sure that you are thinking positively of this. You already knew that this was happening. All right. This is whatever this is going on, it's not as much of a surprise as somebody else who hasn't been very present with their life may have seen it to be. But with this lineup of cards, you already knew that this was going to happen. This may be an ending of a relationship as well, right? There may be some changes happening with that. And so the mermail, he says he's about frivol frivolity, frivolity. And he says, your wish will come true. The mermail, a fish child often picked up to grant wishes, predicts it. Time and patience will turn a turbulent tide to your advantage. There is a link between that what can be seen and what is beyond perception yet to develop. Wait calmly until tranquil waters beckon you to swim. To plunge playfully into deep waters that you have little or no experience of of would be dangerous. By knowing your duties and able to perform them, your voyage through life will be plain sailing. Many treasures lie in store and some occult and mysterious, some occult and mysterious, others tangible prizes of luck. You have much fun to look forward to, so be happy now. Yeah, so you may not clearly see what's happening within this, what's coming down, right? But know that it is a good thing. You've already been putting in the love into all of these things. So sometimes we think that when we put love into things, when we really connect with everything and it's all good, that everything's going to just continue to be peachy king, rose colored glasses, right? But sometimes you put love, so much love into something that those hidden aspects that were crumbling, that were, uh, having the foundation on an unlevel um, type of build, it definitely would be breaking, okay? It, and it, it's going to be seen is what I'm trying to say because I almost lost my words, all right? <laughs> but um, you see that, right? Those things will come up to be recognized and to bring a sense of understanding. It's an awakening happening here, right? You are coming to a space of clarity in the first half of spring. So the second half of spring here, we have the sperm wheel. 
And see that the sperm well here, it says, make friends with the cheerful and optimistic. Exactly. All right. So like I said, there may be a, some relationship that's changing in some way. Um, it could just be the relationship within yourself that's changing because the strength card is about you. Granted, it could have to do with other people, but this energy feels a lot more like it has to do with you. And um, it even could be the close people in your life, right? Those who are gathered around you, y'all's lives are changing collectively as well, right? So the sperm world, He's basically, he's getting you off the fence and into the into the game, right? And he says, the sperm world predicts that you will experience a profound change, like the legendary prophet Jonah swallowed up by his unconscious before being emitted from the whale's throat into new enlightenment. Being the largest living predator with the largest brain in the animal kingdom intimates that you will achieve what you put your mind to and will prosper for many years. The sperm whale can stay underwater for long periods and dive very deeply, implying you get to, down to the foundations of the matter and persevere, while forming several new lasting friendships and your romantic interests may grow rapidly, especially during the winter. So yes, look, whatever relationships, so whatever you've been working on now, because when I'm recording this, we're still in the winter, winter. Right. So whatever you were cultivating during the winter time, whatever relationships you were cultivating during the winter time, um, these people, they 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 here with you. All right, they got you. And it it's like whoever was here and wasn't in alignment with you, with what you had going on, how you was doing that, they're leaving. Right. Um, and whoever was here, who was with all of the things, they are here even more so. Right. And these may be the people who are helping you, people who are giving you advice, people who are helping you heal, helping you get grounded. All right. Um, these are the people who are are sharing your name even. Right. Because knives is about networking, communication. OK. Word of mouth. Heard it through the grapevine. The sperm world travels distance. It, it dives deeply, right? And so there is a deep understanding in regards to who it is that you are, what this was at the beginning of spring, everything that happened during the winter time. It's all coming together in order to help support you can, to continue to grow and move forward. All right. Okay. So let's see what other messages. That we have for spring for you, Aries. Spring for Aries. Line ancestors. Here, what other messages do you have for Aries? <clears throat> oh, okay. So the first half, we have the full moon. So it's a harvest taking place here. All right. This is what is crumbling like the best is coming up out of this you are getting and gaining what it is that you've been working towards you're culminating everything is coming into your grasp into your hand right and anything that is leaving it's whatever is not going to support this fullness that you have created up until this point right where everything it is that you have been um putting your time putting your love putting your effort putting your energy into all right putting your emotions into um, thought, all right, all of that, all the work that you've been doing, it's here manifesting, whether that's been on yourself, within your relationships, okay, within your work, within um, just your connection to your, to the divine, to your ancestors, however, however it's been coming about, okay, and for the second half of, it's over here, it's second half. <laughs> and this is you're going to be feeling summertime energy in the spring all right because this is to let me see i believe this card speaks about flourishing okay 
Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, so <laughs> you're gonna be gaining this understanding and really um, enjoying life, really feeling it. This is savor, it speaks about savoring. So um, this knowing that you have, it's like this knowing that you have about yourself and what it is that it takes for you to be able to succeed in the way in which it is that you want, that you desire, that feels really true and really good to you. You are enjoying and embracing this, okay? This is even enjoying your relationships. You may be um, feeling just very grateful, full of gratitude, full of happiness, full of fulfillment. Romance might be at an all-time high come um this second quarter, the second half of, of spring, okay, and really sharing with you uh, the love, the love, Holy. and it's like both of these women, they got these stoic ass faces, like, yeah, this me, <laughs> like, seriously, that's how they look, okay, and this sperm well, you know, is looking up at the, the gypsy, up at the three of coins. So this understanding is certainly coming from what it is that is taking to be successful in your life, to be successful within um, in, in your mind, to be successful within your health, within everything. Like I said before, your relationships, your work, your business, whatever it is that you have going on, being a mother, being a father of your being with your children, okay, being a wife, a husband, however, you know, what it is that it's going to take, what you need to do, you know that, and knowing this is, is supporting you in fully um, being in that space it is that you need to be in to continue to attract, to continue to grow and build, oh my goodness, let's just take this home first half so the first half we have yeah this is can you see this so this is a three of scarabs so we can kind of look at this as the three of pentacles again all right because scarabs in this deck are pentacles energy earth energy so the this particular scarab is taurus possessions, the Hierophant, and Venus. So this is definitely something about so the old programming has been thrown out, right? And you're doing things in a new way, right? And, and in this, it's giving you, it's providing for you everything it is that you want, everything it is that you need. But this tower card is like, that's fine. You know, you're getting this, but you cannot be in this Taurian fixed nature. You have to be willing to release what is done, what is old, what it no longer is, you know, because it's time for you to attract and embrace the life it is that you live, the beauty of your life, the fullness of your life, the fullness of you, okay, and, and what, what that means for you, what that feels like for you, what that everything your spirit for second half of spring with Aries. <laughs> All right, Aries. So second half of spring, you got the full moon again. So this is the five of feathers and feathers are like air energy, nice energy. So again, more understanding, more clarity, like you are very freaking sure come this second half of spring can't nobody tell you anything all right um you have blossomed you have fully come in to you you are living it you are walking it you are enjoying it all right you really fully feeling it all right you the any type of temptation that was it, it holds no weight holds weight no longer <laughs> okay so Yes, Aries. Whew. Let's see. What other messages do you have for Aries? For the first or second half of spring, what other messages do you have for me? First time. First time. Whew. All the cards want to come out with you. Spirit got a lot of messages for you, Aries. 
stay excited for you. Okay, so there's definitely a move taking place in this first half of spring for you because we have the mice and the railroad. So the railroad for one is about a journey and the mice is, mice go from place to place to find what it is that they want, what it is that they need, right? But this is also a lot about you moving away from this energy, right? Mice come out in the darkness, they come and scavenge, they come, they, they go, they bite holes in the walls, they eat through everything, you know, they're a nuisance, they are infestation in a sense, but they also come through to remind us, um, that we are capable, that we can make it happen what, by whatever means, wherever it is that we, that we are, we can figure it out, literally. You know, um, it's also speaking about the end of suffering taking place. So in that, and perhaps is what this tower moment truly is, right? Ending all of that so that you can come out and, uh hop on the railroad to because in the background this railroad is headed to the mountain top with the sun setting all right with the no i'm sorry this is the sun rising it's peaking up okay so it is it's a new day the light the the light is dawning. All darkness is coming to an end in a sense. All right. There may be some plans taking place about a move. Um, you may be getting ready to do that or the move may be happening very quickly. All right. You very quickly. <laughs> like I said, this first half of spring, things are going swiftly with this fire and air energy. All right. Then you got this full moon here and then this Taurus here. Um, and then this railroad in the mice. So, and then this also speaks about any type of energy it is that you have been dealing with of the mind that has kind of like been self-sabotaging for you, that is, it's leaving. It is, um, it's, um, it's ending, you know, any ways, anything that had been, that felt like it had been stolen to you, from you is being returned. Okay, so it's in a sense like you're getting your life back is what I'm getting from that based off of you choosing to change the channel. Okay, so the second half of spring for Aries, the second half of spring for Aries. Second half of spring for Aries. Okay, yeah. So here you have the fox. And the fox can the, the fox can speak about swiftness. It's about smarts and intelligence, right? It's having the know-how to get things done without being seen, right? So again, this is kind of reminding me of the whole conjure divination. Something is being revealed to you, perhaps in this second half of the year. Um, and this can be in regards to acquaintances. This is not, it doesn't um, necessarily feel like anybody who you have a deep relationship with, but it could be a new love with them, right? Granted, this fox can speak about somebody being deceitful, but with all of this energy, I'm not getting that. You, you can't savor something with deceit. <laughs> you can't, something, things can't come into full fruition Granted, it can, right? But um, that I don't, I don't get that here. It's growth here. It's it's understanding here. This is more about you using your um, know how, your understanding it is that you've gained, your everything, what you've been learning, and all these things, and it's supporting you in moving forward and making very um, winning type of moves, right? So you may also be receiving some swift messages, but you, it feels like you're feeling very comfortable in trusting your intuition and trusting the communication it is that is taking place between you and the divine, between you and source, between you and your ancestors, you know, and really being able to move through things, um, being 
unscathed. Okay. So it's it's like you're at this winning post. So we're gonna close out with one more reading, one more card for your reading. <laughs> gonna pull a dollar card. See what's going on here. One last message for Aries for the Spoon Spirit. Whatever message is for you next second. So it may also be being revealed of things that have been hidden from you of what was uh, blocking you from being able to be in your fullness, right? Whether that has been other people, um, other opinions, or whether that has just been something that you've been feeling about yourself. But this has a lot to do with your self-worth and you seeing that, you recognizing that you being out of this space of being very critical of who it is that you are and like really embracing and accepting okay so yeah because a lot of the goddess card that came out here is grief so grief she is allah and she is in the temple of lovers okay and so in the temple of lovers here she basically speaks about Let's see. So Allah says she is in the temple of lovers and her element is the bush. So that is of the earth. Okay. And she is the ancient mother. Um, she is the foremost Igbo Alusi. She's a deity, basically. God is Allah oversees motherhood, fertility, and the afterlife. After death, humans return to the womb of Allah, replanted in the soul to reincarnate. Her guidance says, give spirit your grief, ball it out, wail it out, cry it out, sob, shriek, shed tears, surrender to it. She says, you are holding unprocessed grief. You want to skip it over and get back to normal, but grief doesn't go away because you ignore it. The only way to healing is to walk through it. Losing a loved one is the ultimate heartbreak. But you also experience grief after breakups, job loss, and disappointments. Self-love and self-care are required. Ask for support. Be gentle with yourself. Her declaration says, I am supported by my loved ones, those who are seen and those who are unseen. So, yeah, like I was saying, there's definitely um, some relationship. Perhaps it could be the relationship you have with yourself or the relationship um, that you had with another, right? Maybe there is just a loss of something that you were building, something you seen with your baby, and it just did not. Okay, so yes, there's definitely um, something that has been lost. Something is being, it's like it's already happened. It's not necessarily something that's being grieved now. It's like a process of grieving that has been taking place. And through this is a sense of understanding that is coming to you that's allowing you to tap more into a fertile connection um, within yourself. Okay, I had to check on my son. Okay, so yes, what the grief it is that you have been because grief is a process. It's not something that just comes and then it goes. It's an entire process in regards to all of it. It can take time. It can take weeks. It can take months, years, however long. You know, it just depends on you, you know, and just the the depth of what the grief it is that you have experienced has really, how that has really affected you you know, but what you have experienced within that, this has allowed you to gain a new sense of self and allowing you to live life in a very light way, in a very healthy manner, in a very prosperous manner, even, you know, in a way in which it is that you truly want that resonates with your heart, who it is that you are. You got Venus and Aries, <laughs> that is you you know, <clears throat> so recognize when these new people come into your life where you may be projecting old grief 
from experiences that you've had onto them and see things for what it is they truly are. You know, let the truth be revealed to you um, in all the ways that's needed because your reality is shifting in a very prosperous way um, away from the the bullshit that has been being experienced up until now, you know, especially what's been hidden, All right? Because the big house, the tower card, that's a foundational thing. And everything's built on top of the foundation. Everything's hidden under the foundation. You know, when the home starts to fall apart, it starts there. It looks like on the inside or wherever it is on the outside that it's happening at those places but it is a foundational, it's a structural issue that is being dealt with or that needs to be dealt with. And you are doing that, Aries. So yes, I hope you have a wonderful spring equinox. Um, I hope that, you know, y'all just feeling the love during this time, no matter the weather. All right. And yes, that all is well with you. I will see you all next time. And don't forget to share this with someone who needs it. Like, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. If you are, um, if you like this type of content, I will be back with more of it. And I will see you soon, Aries. Bye.